Tonight's meeting is, is, uh, is Christmas in July. The object of the thing is for us to gather ideas and maybe, you know, let July go by and maybe let August go by and maybe in September or October you might start something instead of starting it December 1st. We're going to start over here and what we need you to do is when I come to your object and we may not get all of your objects, we're going to treat everything as Christmas in July. If you will stand, give your name, and then explain how it was made or what was the inspiration for it and who, who would be a good gift for it. Okay? We'll start with this hummingbird. Stand That's mine. Please. Okay. And Simkin. Uh, my wife is into hummingbirds. Uh, I made that for her. And now I have to make three more. <laughs> you didn't stack cut them, sir? I did. But you got to make three more. I got to make three more. Oh no. Okay, and it's made out of it's made out of what? Like looks like about what? Quarter uh, inch, eighth it's, inch. Uh, quarter inch. Uh, Baltic, Baltic birch. Baltic birch and okay. half inch uh, AC ply. Is this yours too? Yeah. Okay. Still the other way. Stand it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Apologize. I can't. Stand the other way. way on in. Boots on the ground. Well, I, didn't, I, I couldn't, I don't have my glasses on, so I couldn't read it. Uh, that there is also mine. Uh, I have got a uh, uh, friend that we were in the uh, same outfit, and he went ahead and spent six months over in Vietnam in uh, April. Uh, he came home in April, and he went to a fire uh, uh, base that we were at and collected mortar around cases that were totally destroyed, crated them all up, sent them home and said, Dan, could you do anything with them? And I'm making one of those for each one of these surviving members of our unit. Ah, so that's where it was made from, a mortar case? Yeah. Okay. The dark wood you mean? Yeah. This one right here. It's all just weathered and some of it's rotted. And Is this also it. yours? Yes. It's all okay. Oh, okay. I didn't want, didn't want to be with uh, Those I'm making for my wife's uncles and aunts for Christmas. Uh, the uncles are all preachers, and I try to do something significant for them each year, and this year that's what I'm giving them. Half-inch plywood? Uh, yes. Uh, where'd you get the pattern? Uh, that one I found online. I can't say okay. exactly where. That's fine. I was just trying to help people just in case they wanted yeah. to do something similar. That's one of uh, Steve uh, Good's patterns. I just went ahead and made that one for me. I like it. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I pull it out? Did you make more than one? Yeah. Uh, I actually. Like, made I really four. do need that in my shop, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, I actually made four of them. So I got three of them sitting in the corner ready to go for gifts or whatever. I got you. And where did that pattern come from? That's a Steve, Steve uh, Good. That's a Steve Good pattern. That's also a Steve Good pattern. A uh, couple of our friends are coming up on significant anniversaries, so we came up with that and we're going to give it as gifts. That's a Steve Good pattern. Obviously, I modified it with uh, my wife's name. Uh, I have orders for 23 since my wife put that one out in the front yard. I have people from the neighborhood coming up and say, where did you get that? My wife says, my husband makes them. Mm -hmm. They said, how much? $40 a piece, and she's got orders for 23 of them. Price right. That's good. Uh, it's made out of, uh, some of them are going to be made out of uh, cedar, the rest of them are made out of old uh, pressure uh, treated uh, boards that I have. They're not going to last very long outside. Huh? You going to replace them on for them when they... Actually, actually they will last quite a while outside. 
The cedar will for sure, but the pressure treated wood. Yeah, the treated the treated uh, wood that's on there now is actually about 20 years old, so I think it will last a while without any issue. Cool. We can always call Dan to bring a whole supply of good stuff. Okay, now, um, when we've, we've said it frequently, we said Steve Goodpatter. Does everybody understand what we mean by Steve Goodpatter? If you don't, raise your hand. I don't, you know, I just don't want it just to go and then somebody says, well, I wish they'd told me what that was. Okay, so everybody knows we're fine. Well, that's mine. I'm getting ready. Uh, that's all the quarter inch uh, core in. Wow. Ah. That's uh, a pattern I've had for quite a while. Yep. Just put a piece of wall behind it. Uh, Make it look good. Bring it out. Uh, <laughs> not mad. Don't well, tip. Joy is, uh, uh, what's her name? Joy Thomas? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she had, a, had one made out of wood, uh, out of wood. And uh, I I had a little bit of uh, four inch corian, so I tried it. And <clears throat> her pattern, <clears throat> excuse me, her pattern had uh, had a wire down and it had a swing and the bird was on a perch. Mm -hmm. Well, I went through two 16th inch drills and boiled two pieces of corian uh, trying to drill the hole through that. So I modified the pattern a bit and made a pedestal and put the bird on the pedal. They look great. Did you buy that quarter inch corn or did you cut it down? Pardon me? Quarter inch corn. I've got a lot of corn, but it's not that thin. A, a friend of mine had a piece of it in his garage and he gave it to me. But like I said, I think, I, I think, to be honest with you, I want to say I got the wood one hanging. That's that was what was in the boomerang box yeah. last month. That's what I got. So anyway, so that that Joy, Joy gave me the pattern for that. I thought she'd be here tonight, and I got a piece of quarter inch pattern, so I poured a couple of polar blades on it. So okay. So utensils that were turned. Big gray. Thank you. I want to put them on the table. I made those sets for my my kids and and, uh, and some of the grandkids that were married. I made eight sets of those. Eight sets. That's a, that that pizza cutter is sharp. Oh yeah. 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 You buy the kits and turn the handle. Did you uh, laminate the handles? I mean, Did you laminate the handles yourself? Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. So they look look really good and he, oh here's your his, his confirmation he did eight sets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Hey Greg again, uh, I made those. I was making eight inch ones and, and my son will ask me if I if he had a piece of wood and uh, special wood that his uh, friend of his had given him. And he said, Can you make a ten inch one? And he didn't know I was, he was getting an eight inch for Christmas. And uh, so I made that one to prove that I could make a 10 inch one. And then I, I, uh, his 10 inches on there, the, the laminated wood in the picture. But, but, uh, we got you. Made those, uh, that, that was a Christmas gift for one Christmas. Just some plaques that uh, we put together for folks. And that's about it. They're, uh, they're oak and uh, the backing, I got one red and Couple different colors of them. Tom, do you do you do you create those on the computer? No. You mean the patterns? Yes. No, I got them. I think from Sheila Landry. Okay, I just want to make yeah. sure where you got them. If you did, I, I'm looking for the person that somebody said they could do these real easily. So. No, I wish I could. <laughs> so I want to have a class on it. Somebody said I think you said it was easy to do. I, I think. Yeah, to I did. I said I would do one and I did one. So but it, so we got Christmas, I'll be home for and you said these were like Sheila I Landry. Did Sheila Landry, yeah. Okay, I'll be home for Christmas. Tom Deal, Winter Wonderland. What do you put oh just a piece of light uh, painted wood behind? Sometimes I use uh Luan uh, flooring. Sometimes I use quarter inch here's another here's, perch. here's another one I'll be home for Christmas. Uh Using the green background instead of the red, Tom Beal. And then here's Winter Wonderland. Here's the paint.
I think Gray, I made those, I made a total of 90 of them. And uh, I gave them out to <clears throat> my kids. I started out a few of them, and then the wife said, well, our friends uh, need some, and then uh, gave some to her uh, her brother, and his wife said, well, I'd, I'd like to order eight, eight more, and I wound up with a total of 99 of them. Yeah, I made 100 this weekend. I cut a hundred out this weekend, so it took me longer than a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, and instead of having to paint the birds, if you don't want to paint the birds, the uh, scrap wood from the competition gun stocks, they sell like this. I can do, I can paint them, or I can use walnut on maple or whatever. That walt, walt that I call it the Cadillac of plywood works the best. Spectraply, huh? Spectraply. Spectraply works great. A Steve Newstead, I made that. It's out of a core. I was just trying to do a piece of wood. And I actually threw the inside out. It was stack cut, so I just took them out and threw them away. And I saw them in the trash, and I'm going, eh. So I pulled them back out and finished it, and stuck a small screw eye in the top. And ended up with two ornaments instead of one. That was a good idea. The trick to this, if you're doing it, think ahead of time because. Great. Where no, where you put your hole to do that inside cut, like i.e., if you do it here on the very bottom, the foot could be cut a little bit shorter and nobody will ever know that it, that you drilled the hole there. You know, if you screw up and, and drill a hole right there, then you got a hole right in the middle of the deer. So and, and if you did it right, you could drill a hole where you're gonna hang the <laughs> hang the twine through it. So if you think ahead. Dick Gray again. I uh, thank you, Dick Gray, for bring it and he's got felt on the inside. I've got an orange dot inside of the cover and inside of the, on the top of this edge so you know which way, which way it goes. Ah. I don't have the accuracy that on the Okay, and the 3D, and the three dimensional, this is a three dimensional that you'll see, see I've done a lot of them. That's just, that's just taking a piece of scrap walnut and just making your own ha making your own handles, little 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 knobs or handles. And it looks like he made a couple more. He made this one and then, you know, can I have three more of those and two more of these? And he ended up making it looks like 25. Okay, I'm Rob Austin. Okay. Yeah. Hey Rob. As a group, we made these and we made several of them. Uh, Marcus came over and a few other people and we made them. You know, a whole batch of them and gave them out to different people. They make great Christmas gifts. We don't do many things that we just do one of. And it's I usually not me like by what, myself. Twenty of them that day. I we made a bunch. Marcus and I made several. And this one's this one's made out of oak. And the pattern, the pattern is. It was in one of the scroll saw magazines. These are Rob, these are Rob Austin's. Yes. And this is, a, these, this is a pattern that was in Woodcraft Magazine, I believe. Yes. And uh, if you'll notice, these are his trucks. He's so, he's so advertising on the side. If you can't read it, it says, uh, Rob's Woodshop, daycare for adults. And that's how he carries the people back and forth. <laughs> yeah. We have four or five people over the shop. We made a whole batch of them. And then we got a bunch of leftover parts that we haven't got. If you look at them, them, I'm going to do it this way one time. If you look at them this way, they're all the same here, here, and here. And what you do, this one you put a gas tank on, this one you put a steak bed, this one you put a box on. Easy to do, guys, except the pattern was a little bit wrong. Back here, they had to extend the blocks, otherwise the wheels touched the touched the back. Oh, well, I was trying to show what was the puzzle that was in the side, inside. What he did, here's, he made a box. Yeah. No, I did not make the box. That's a, that's a hobby. For five bucks, I can't make that box. Okay. <laughs> and then what he did is made a smaller picture of what I'm assuming the puzzle is going to be. That's what the puzzle is, yeah. And there it's, he cut it. Uh, did you use a pattern? Uh, what I do, I'm Walt Walters. What I do is I, on Delta Cat, I make a uh, grid, just a square grid, and usually so size it about a quarter, uh, three quarters of an inch square, 
and make it, if I adjust it a little bit to fit the exact pattern. And then I don't make any pattern for the tabs, the tabs are all freeform, but this way I keep, get the lines nice and straight and the good square corners where the four pieces meet. Uh, I put the pattern on a sacrificial piece that I put on top. Um, and what makes, the, what makes the puzzle harder is if all the pieces are the same size. So that makes it good. Another one, another variation of this is it's a great Christmas gift for grandkids or whatever. If you've got some picture, maybe when they visited you over the summer or whatever, take that, make a puzzle out of it. If you know, you've done it, make a puzzle out of it. You give it to them. The kids will take it, open it, and probably shove it on the side. They won't do anything. And then later on during that weekend of Christmas, they'll start doing Oh, there's me! There's me! There's me! It's a great, it's a great Christmas gift. And they once they once somebody sees if there's a, if you got a number of grandkids together, once they see somebody, they're looking for themselves. So it's it's a great, it's yeah, a great gift. I did that my niece. That's a pattern by uh, Charles Ham. It's called Winter Retreat. It's made out of uh, eight-inch Baltic birch. I stack cut six of them at a time. Uh, the, and then there's just a black paper behind it to give it some definition. Uh, and another just a piece of eighth inch folded birch to hold it in. I also made that frame. I gave a presentation a while back on making picture frames and that was one of the partially made pieces I had for that. And finished it up and gave you know, it and for those familiar with uh, fret cutting, there's only in two inside cuts in this. I made made those. I'm, uh, my church has a barbecue every. Supposed to be in last of October this year, and I'm going to give those to them to sell at the barbecue. Uh, they do well. They had the biggest year they ever had last year, and I had first a lot of stuff to them for myself. Do not underprice them, sir. <laughs> to be honest with you, they sell well at fifty dollars a pair. So these these are Marcus's. That's right. Say your name, please. Marcus Bailey. Okay. And one show to one is made out of a dime. I made it the with the horse on and gave to a lady to on top third fourth there just right here teaches kids how to ride horses and her little granddaughter said see if you can one. make me one out of a dime I'm sorry well you try to make them out of a dime <laughs> <laughs> it's thinner it should cut easier <laughs> well I wasn't as smart as walk I miscut that outside and throwed it away. Mm -hmm. I noticed they just cut them out and saved them. So. These are great gifts for Christmas. We had two pres we had a scroll saw presentation on how to do them, and we had a Saturday class on them. I don't know if the YouTube is out on it yet. I haven't I haven't seen it yet. Okay, who, who's uh, music? George Nolan, there's my I have a son who plays the piano. I want to make some of those put in his uh, piano. Don't need to bring it. Did you stack cut it, George? Yeah. It's two, two cards. I would assume you probably made the pattern too, right? That was a steep good pattern, okay? But I thought it was George. I want to say that's George. Yes, that's also mine. Uh, with that, what you do, you split that log in three part, three pieces and uh, cut the seam out of the center part, paint the, black part, paint the back part black, and then put it all back together. That's even cheaper than me. Went out and got it off the got it off the gut, got it off the curb, gives wood to use. Go to George North. This was one we had. If you came in December last year and nobody would tell me what the program was, we did activity extravaganza. I want to say it's four levels or five levels. It's more like six. Seven. Is it six? Okay, whatever. And see, I have a son who likes to paint, so and I don't. So I told him I'll make one before I put it together. And they, they paint each each level. And that is a that is a Steve Good pattern. 
for those we have Steve Good patterns are free patterns. So all you have to do is just, just Google when you go in there and search and just search for an activity and a bunch of them will come up that he's done. So if you need a pattern, you don't want to pay for it, you want to do something, and you can make it, and you can just take it on your copy machine and make it various sizes. I mean, I made a number that were maybe three inch, three inch in diameter. Since we're on that, I think this is a George North also. Ooh, good contrast there. <laughs> and that was probably stack cut. He probably cut four to six at a time. Yeah, yeah, because like I said, it's much easier to cut that many at a time than it is one. I can cut six of those faster than I can cut one. And George George will test to that, and Walt will test to that. It's much easier to stack cut you re because you need that resistance. Here's a... Whose is that? That's mine. Okay. That's, that's three, three dimensional. It says Jesus on one side. Live the other way. Live. Live the other way. That's three dimensional cutting. So you cut it one time. You don't take it apart. You you clamp it back together by putting packing tape around it, and then you cut the other side. Actually, actually, I drill holes to put my so it's all played through and didn't have to, tie, have to do that. I just cut one side, turn it, cut the other side, and cut into it and take a piece of art. Okay. Well, that's, the, that's the normal way to do three dimensional. These are made from all the scrap wood you've got sitting around out there. And he did those at the first church bazaar last year. And I think they had every, everyone sold. So they're basically, what he's doing in this case, he's taking two pieces of wood, one dark, one light. He may be taking four at a time. And then what he's doing is just interchanging. That way they fit exactly. Even if you, even if you cut it wrong, it's still going to fit back. So you are on both of them. Yep, you are on both of them. Here's a basket. And that basket, I made some of those for the, for the church to sell. And, and they went, they were the first ones they sold. That pattern is by Walt. Uh, he did a real good job on that pattern. You know, most, most of those baskets like that, you cut it out of one piece, and it's got holes on it, and you have to offset them. That one, you, you cut out of two pieces, and, and they, they fit together, so it makes a full basket. So that's a, that's a cool one. Okay, this is, I don't, whose is this? This is mine, Walt Walters. And it's a Steve Good pattern? It's Steve Good pattern, yeah. It's kind of an oak and walnut. Explain how it's made, sir. It's made uh, quarter-inch walnut, cut the fretwork in the, in the front, and then cut the, with a band saw, I cut the uh, center part, the oak part, to, to fit, and then move the wood, the walnut on top of the oak, and then cut it with again with a band saw, cut off the, the opposite, outer end. Okay, that's me. I'm Stuart Miller. Okay. It's just somebody who likes dogs, or little kids says dog mom. Oh, dog mom? Yeah. Oh, okay. Where'd you get the pattern? Uh, Where'd you create it? I didn't create it. It might have been Steve Good. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, then I just saw a picture on the internet, mm -hmm. and I kind of made the pattern to match it. There's, there were about four or five of them, right? There were a couple of colors. Yep. Oh, yeah, just they just fit it's together. If you, if you do them, it looks like you painted one black. So this was out of the same piece of wood. So no matter how bad he cut that, it was still going to fit together. But those are kind of cool. I mean, it's just different. It's like a stick man. Bending over and loving his dog. <laughs> and I got a email from a person that did these, and he he calls me Puzzle Man. So he sent me the pattern. He also sent one for Rob, which I which I which I showed before. But I said, okay, I would love a class on that, but he didn't have time to do it. But I'm saying that was a pattern he made. 
They're not that difficult to make. Steve Good had a pattern out there a week ago. Kind of one at a time, just yeah, a piece that. of scrap wood to see, <laughs> see what I can do. Uh, I would be, be literally, he can throw an anvil pretty good. <laughs> the gavel. Okay, but that's Steve Good. And then we talked about baskets. To me, this is Hans Meyer. This is all Hans Meyer stuff that's being shown now. I don't like to say my name again. Okay. The nice part about these baskets, if you're a beginning scroll saw person, okay? Remember, my rule are the three P's. Patience, persistence, and practice. So in this case, if you're having problems cutting round, and then getting that tail and coming back around and coming back around and coming back around, okay? By the time you get done with this, you've put in your practice, okay? Because, for those that don't know, the piece of wood I used was only that big, big as that top one. What you do is you cut all the rings are flat, and then what you do is just glue them up together. So if you're having a problem with round, you do this. This is a Steve Good pattern. Persistence patience and practice no matter how bad you cut it and i've seen some really bad ones in the classes i did i had one eight-year-old that cut one and he overcut three rings but we were still able to put it together you know he kind of missed a couple of rings he missed a couple of lines but you can change it a little bit you can change it up a little bit tilt your saw just slightly and you can have concentric rings and it opens up if you're old enough to remember remember used to steal I used to get them from my dad he had those little cups they were this big and then you could pull them open and they became a drinking cup they were thin metal camping cup. the camping cup back then I, I, they're not, I don't see them any much much what I'm saying but that effectively what I did is just pulled it away and this is nothing but a piece of piece of pine it's nothing nothing fancy Go along that same way, this, this is a basket, then you bring the handle up, you've cut this at an angle, and what you can do is test, test your angle, and what that does is you want to make a cork in a, you want that to be a cork in a bottle, which is what you normally don't want on a scroll saw because you want to cut it 90 degrees, but in this case you want a cork in a bottle. So if you use the same blade you're using in the saw, and the same wood, you can test it, do your angle you think you need, and then cut a circle and make sure it doesn't come out. If it won't, if that plug won't come out, then you can cut the rest of it out and you're in good shape. And in this case, what you do, if you look real carefully, in this case, I don't know if you can see it or not, it started right there. It started right here and went all the way, or I could start right here and came all the way out. So concentric circles. I call it a layered basket. What you're doing is you create this piece and this piece. They're stack cut together, and what they're done, what they're, what they've got is you see there's like little ledges. Forget my thumb right there. See the little ledges that are there, and then what you do is you cut rings to go on those ledges. So that becomes your basket. If you go to, if you go to. Uh, year 2013 on YouTube, and you go out to Hans Meyer Baskets, you'll see how this was made. That's made on a scroll saw, but it's ring, 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 and then you got a top and bottom. Thank you. That'll help. But what I'm just saying, and then in this case, what I did is I, is I made sure when I was using the sander that I pushed it on real hard and burned it. So it gave it that gave it that contrasting look. And then all of this is not a rod. That's just how you cut it. That's just how it was cut, and it was layered. It looks like it was a woven basket, but it's not. Here's basically from last two Saturdays go class. Here's a box. All a teardrop box. They're all made the same way, made out of scrap wood. A lot of people, maybe you've got set of earrings you want to give to your granddaughter or you've got something you want to give to somebody you know if you need a box for it you know you can make a box for it whatever you want and, and put it in there or let's say it was something long and thin i don't know what you do but 
you know, you could make a long thin box. Or huh? Necklace, could be a necklace, a flock the bottom and make it look pretty. These are little boxes, you know, just made from scrap wood. And then this, these are three-dimensional, three-dimensional uh, knobs on the top. You know, I dropped it and crushed it. So this was the, uh, this was the balloon, hot air balloons I made, and I made them that size, and I made them, made them bigger. If you go out on YouTube, you can see, you can see the, uh, you can see how they were made and where the pattern came from and whatever. Since I'm in that same mode, of course, I put this over here, brought it all the way here. I cut, I, I cut, I cut two of these, and of course, I broke this off as soon as, as, soon as I came in here. Uh, the pattern that is a Steve Good pattern, scrap wood. And I just broke it over. That's the way it happens. Okay. Bye. Okay. Yeah, broke it off. Okay, but these are just made out of made out of you know all your scrap wood. These are walnut, walnut, uh, oak, oak. Now, heard a great tip tonight from somebody in here. When you put wheels on, when you put wheels and you have this problem, the glue stuck. Okay, to this wheel. If I took my wheel before I put them on and just just ran a, uh, some wax on the back side. This, this ran that wax on the backside, the glue won't stick to the wax and you don't have to worry about that. This is Steve Good is selling a bunch of them now, but he's selling them this way. But I get comments about this all the time. This was made out of a piece of two by four. I just made two pieces, you know, you can make you can make two out of a two by four, you know, the width. This is a much older, much fancier, but not really anything drastic looking. It's out of one of those books. But in their case, they used screws, and then what they did, I think I can show it, where you can look down. What they did is put a little piece, I put a little pieces of copper tubing between the wheel and the body to give it that standoff effect. How do you know? <laughs> you don't have to worry about magnetic north, you don't have to worry about uh, compasses, you don't have to worry about anything. That's accurate. You are here, and it's right. I believe it was a Steve Good pattern. Okay, this was the Steve Good. This is cut from, I'm sorry. If I get them up, they'll fall over if I keep them back in the front. This was cut, this is cut from, from three quarter inch oak, which I in turn resaw and got it thin. And this is a Steve Good, this was a Steve Good uh, activity scene. I think they'd show up if you turn them sideways. Yeah. Okay, we'll, 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 I'm just trying to get them over here right now. But anyway, I didn't make the, uh, but what they are, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to turn this one this way. As you can see, what they are is you've got the outsides are the same. Okay, and the middle is a shorter piece and it's got a head on it. And then what you do is you glue them together. So it's a lot of pieces. But, and then, some of them, there's... They come apart on the bottom. And you make bases. You see the base, see like this piece was a little bit different. This piece was a little bit different because it's got this notch in it, and then this piece doesn't have the notch, and then you have the piece in the middle which has the head, and then what you did is it goes in into there, and then what you do is glued on an arm and glued on an arm. This happens to be one of the three wise ones, but it's a cool it's a cool thing. It looks looks pretty rusty, and then this was camel. Get him in the right spot. I'll get him in the back up right here. There's a camera. But anyway, that's that's there. Um, but anyway, and you've got plenty of ideas for the younger set. So thank you.
Thank you.